Hello, friends. Welcome to Season 2, Episode 1 of the podcast. Wanted to start off this season with something extremely controversial. It's called the Mandela Effect. Um, I know people who are would be considered low-educated and kind of flighty think that this is complete craziness and ludicrousy and will reject it at any point. And I know some PhDs and doctors who say, yeah, it does exist and I've experienced it and it makes complete logical sense. But in all cases, grab yourself a cup of coffee, sit down and buckle in because this is the most mind-melting, crazy concept out there. Let's start the Mandela Effect with a real-world example. If you think back and you remember to the 90s, there was a movie called Shazam with Shaquille O'Neal, and it was about this really down-on-his-luck kid from a tough home street kid, uh, lots of social problems, and uh, he finds, I can't remember if it was a lamp or a Coke bottle, and out, poof, comes Shazam, Shaquille O'Neal, this great big monstrosity of philanthropic hope and three wishes, lots of moral lessons to learn be learned there. And in my opinion, it was a giant NBA propaganda piece to show how great Shaquille O'Neal was and to sell Nikes. But I'm pretty sure you kind of recall a little bit of it. Watched it in high school. Pull out your laptop or your smartphone and type in Shazam IMDb. You will find that that movie never existed. When this crazy discovery occurred for the general population in our technical super highway here where we have everything electronic at our disposal with the internet the click of a mouse people started discovering other crazy things if you take a look at the ford logo some people remember the ford logo did not have a swoop in the f other people remember it the other way around or the jc penny logo how many ends is in it think about it and then look it up there was all this stuff coming forward of all these changes in little things to huge things. And that actually, in essence, is where the term the Mandela effect comes from. Nelson Mandela was imprisoned in South Africa and then afterwards, on his release, became the next leader of South Africa and essentially brought the end to the apartheid. Now, Lots of people believe and remember a news story being broadcasted in the 80s that Nelson Mandela was killed in prison. Now, I bet they wish they kept those newsprints, but if they switched dimensions, the newsprints would be different anyway. That's where the concept for the Mandela effect came, is that supposed news story where Nelson Mandela actually died and never became the president of South Africa. What's really fascinating about this is that some people will actually rationalize that that's where a lot of our conspiracy theories come from. There is a conspiracy theory that Avril Lavigne was killed and that she was replaced by her identical twin sister. Well, that's the funny thing about it is there's no real historical account of her having a twin sister. and But this theory is out there. It, it, it believe, they believe that Oliver Levine is either a twin sister or a clone of herself. Um, and I would hazard to guess perhaps there is a dimensional shift and these people have to rationalize it somehow. I don't want to sound like too much of a nut, but perhaps these people who see Elvis Presley on the street a week after his death could be experiencing the exact same thing. Now that's the macro. I'm going to talk a little bit about the micro and my personal experiences with the Mandela effect and how I actually discovered this thing actually existed and experienced it in my own world. And I'm pretty sure I can pull you into experiencing it as well, if you haven't already with Shazam. So to understand it is one of those things where it's like Rocky Road ice cream. You don't know what it feels like or tastes like until you've taken a good old bite of the ice cream cone. So 
one of my really close friends and business colleagues, Phoenix Numerology, um, and I were walking down the road one day and I said, that building was never there. I mean, it's, it's right there and it's brick. I never noticed it before, but it, obviously it's been here for a while. And I just dismissed it as, oh, isn't that the darndest things? Because my mind subconsciously would not be able to rationalize it. And she said, welcome to this dimension. And I kind of looked at her, very well-educated, PhD, smart, smart cookie. And I'm like, what do you mean by welcome to this dimension? And so the good doctor sat me down opened her laptop and showed me a blog posting that contained an image with a bunch of bars and different colors and different numbers. She showed me the timestamp on it. Uh, it was posted a couple of years before, and it's a walking account of the dimensions that we're in. And she said, this will change. The date posted won't change, but this will change. Now, unfortunately, since then, that blog's been taken down. But her explanation was, we switch from dimension to dimension uncontrollably, and that's where these things occur. Well, initially, I'm like, okay, I, I trust you. Um, I can believe that. I can get on board this, but I need to test it myself. So I decided just to let it sit for a while, and I'll bring it back up in my brain and chew it over another time. Shortly after, I jumped into a plane. It was in Vancouver went to the beach, had a great vacation, hopped back on the plane, came back home, bang. The color of a building completely changed. Completely changed. And it was glaring in the face. So I thought to myself, no, nah, this was painted. And I walked up and there was signs of sun bleaching and the paint was peeling off. So obviously it wasn't just painted three days before that. And then, boom. Boom. I realized that this concept of the Mandela effect and changing dimensions really exists. So here's the challenge to you, the listener. If you can think back in time to where something changed for you, it could be something significant like Nelson Mandela dying in the 80s or the Shazam experience that I'm sure some of you are scratching your head and, and uh, unbelievably shocked with. Um, but think back, is there something that has changed recently in the extremes or even in the smalls? Let it be the shape of a road, because I guarantee you something will pop up. Now, once I learned this, I started seeing it replicate through my life, and I found myself sitting down giving a tarot reading to one of my good friends who's a medic. And I explained it to her, this is how it works. You know, things change. And she looked at me like I grew 18 heads and was speaking a weird language. And then a week and a half later, I get a text message of a picture of a, of a hiking trail. And she's like, this is not supposed to bend this way. I think I have just discovered that I have changed dimensions. Now, of course, with that challenge, I could end this podcast right now and say, there it is. Well, what kind of a host I'd be? I'd be I'd be horrible. That would be the most irresponsible way for me to handle the situation. So I'm going to dive a little bit deeper into it, give you some of my theories as well as some of the popular theories that are out there. And uh, I'll let you make your own decision in regards to this crazy thing we call the Mandela effect and dimensional change. So a lot of the people in the world of higher spirituality um, believe this to a point that they can control it. Gaia, uh, the popular um, website, put out an article talking about how you yourself, using the uh, two-glass method, can put yourself into a meditative state and change the dimension immediately in front of you. And I've heard of some uh, spiritual sites making the claim, some pagan sites, making the claim that you can actually change your world environment. You can meditate before you go to bed as a poor man, and you can wake up a millionaire. Now, obviously, that has a lot of questions to it, and I, I, don't, I don't believe that one for one second, but it does draw the question, can you voluntarily change dimensions? Further, how does one actually change dimensions? 
before I move on to another explanation, I have to point out that unfortunately with a Gaia um, article, there's no real way that we can tangibly prove or disprove that they are correct. You can utilize two glasses or the other sites that say you can meditate and switch to a different dimension because if they switch to a different dimension, there's still another form of them in this dimension. So they actually didn't switch dimensions, right? It gets very complex and it can never really be properly digested. That's not saying that it does work or it doesn't work. Um, but I, I'm still skeptical. Now that we've gone to the massive extreme of saying that you can change the totality of your universe through meditation and two glasses, we're going to go to the other side of the spectrum and examine um, what some medical professionals say in regards to it. There was a 2017 study um, and they gave a number of people um, a number of false memories uh, and they utilized like uh, what Professor Brotoli says is a... Uh, unaware information stimulus uh, to see if there's an explanation of accuracy. His argument is that there is a uh, concept that's introduced into the brain um, through changing the memory pathways backwards. Now, there, there's a lot of trying to explain some of the supernatural in this because first question that I have is if somebody has a false memory backwards that false memory going backwards would still be linear in a false memory backwards to the individual very much how we can't prove that the meditation method will move you to another dimension we can't prove that it's just you creating your own memory backwards and the reason why i have to say that is because there's a lot of people who remember the shazam movie or the nelson mandela death all these other things right if we all somehow created this false reality on our own that would be you know ludicrous to even propose right so they both kind of mutually seem incorrect again i leave it up to you to make your own decision but i'm going to walk you down the logical pathway that it was explained to me it's so basic and simple um and that's why mine is also can be dismissed as well but i'll walk you through it First caveat for this to work, you have to have it experienced this Mandela effect somehow in your life, um, or it's just going to be easily dismissed. But we have to accept that it's true. And if it's true, we have to accept that it has to have some sort of a cause. The cause that was presented to me was liminal spaces. When we put ourselves into a liminal space, uh, everything outside of that space is still functioning, but what's on the inside of that space is non-functioning, which makes a layer between the subjects inside the liminal space and the subjects outside of the liminal space a little bit slippery and easy to slide into a different dimension. Now, what's a different dimension? Let's analyze that one for one second. Dimensions themselves are different lenses of reality. Now, if we consider that everything around us is made of molecules and that continuously goes down and continuously goes down into this thing called cosmic zoom, everything is just energy, right? Now, if we picture reality as this bright light hitting a prism, it gets cut into multiple different colors. And so that allows these multiple existences to exist. And it's explained in quantum physics um, I'm not a quantum physicist, and if I try to, I'll probably end up cracking my brain and sounding absolutely foolish. So I'm not even going to attempt to go down that road. But what I will say is that when you, when the light, when the, the reality is split, it's easy for us to slide to different variant degrees. That being said, it's impossible for us to go from one side of the spectrum to the other. So becoming a millionaire when we wake up is, is very doubtful indeed. However, certain things can change. The color of businesses, the curvature of a pathway, uh, the flavor of our favorite bag of chips, which was an interesting one that happened to me. So when we get back to the liminal space, we are able to, we slide in that color spectrum because of the liminal space. You're in a 
crowded shopping mall, hustling, bustling, lots of businesses open, lots of people shopping. And you're working as a retail worker and you're asked to take two boxes and throw them in the dumpster. You walk out the door front, go down a long hallway where the door is shut behind you, very deftly quiet. The hallway seems to go on forever and the light banks on the roof are all the same fluorescent light spaced out absolutely perfectly on the roof. That's a liminal space. And now you're in a position where your energy can can fluctuate and slide. Now, I believe also that a good number of people can go through the same dimensional shifts. And that's through another liminal space. Twelve people hop into an aluminum tube called an airplane and get launched way up into the atmosphere. They're above the placid, clean surface of clouds. You look out the window, it doesn't even appear like you're moving at all. You're just suspended. But you have 12 people sitting in there, drinking coffee, reading books, um, watching movies. That liminal space can create a time period where they can actually shift dimensions. And that is why I think when I went to Vancouver, had some fun in the sun, came back, that building was a completely different color. That then brings us out to the next question. Can we voluntarily, through a meditative state, switch our dimensions? Now, long and short of this is I have absolutely no clue. <laughs> I would love to say, yes, absolutely, we can meditate today and we can change the color of any building to any color you want to. That'd be kind of cool. I've never experienced that. Personally, for myself, I think that it's one of those things where the shift is caused by a giant universal um, event horizon, and it kind of slides us back and forth, more like moving a, mo a ship moving on waves, more than uh, us being able to like walk up a hill or drive our car down the main street. That being said, I am very curious. I'd love to hear from you. If you look me up on Facebook uh, at the Ravenwood Healer shoot me a message and tell me a story of when you had a major shift in dimensions. I'm also going to throw these up on YouTube, find it on YouTube, throw out there that a shift that you've experienced. Cause I'm very, very curious. And if you've actually been able to orchestrate a shift, please let me know. Now that being said, I will be charitable, but I may look at it with a little bit of scrutiny and, but I'm so fascinated and curious about the whole entire thing. And that concludes our podcast for today. That's season two, episode one. If you'd like to reach out to me, please do shoot me an email at the Ravenwood healer, one word at gmail.com. So the Ravenwood healer at gmail.com. Shoot me a message on Facebook at the Ravenwood healer. Go to my website, theravenwoodhealer.com, and check me out on YouTube. I really want to hear from more of my fans. I know that there is like 826 of you in accordance to what Anchor says, so I'd like to hear from you guys. Um, thank you very much for your patience the last year. I know it's I've been gone for quite a long time. That COVID kicked the crap out of everybody. I didn't catch it, but my business did, and so my outlook did. <laughs> but I'm happy to be back. Shoot me a message, and I look forward to talking to you next time. Mm -hmm.